it's not going to be identical. My belief map is not identical to your belief map because we have different beliefs. And beliefs, as we all know, can be wrong. But knowledge can't be wrong. There's no such thing as false knowledge. Knowledge, by definition, must be true. And that's, and that's a hard thing for a lot of people to wrap their head around. They keep on thinking to themselves, well, I don't want to believe this because I could be wrong. Well, so what? Yeah, beliefs can be wrong. Now, if you say you know something to be true, you could be wrong about having knowledge, but that knowledge cannot be wrong. It's called the principle of attribution and retraction. I'm attributing um, my, my propositional state, which in this case would be knowledge, and then you know what? I found out I was wrong. I didn't have knowledge. And, and this goes back to like a, a meme that I saw the other day, and I know this is kind of going down a rabbit hole, but I think it's kind of go, it segues way back to the very beginning when you're talking about the base level conversations. There was a meme that somebody put up, and it said, um, you, we, atheists won't disprove your God until you prove it first, something along those lines. Very, very nonsensical statement. Ooh, and it makes all I, I hear that a lot. Um, it, it's yeah, so absolutely it's nonsensical. Yeah, And let me explain why, because this is one of the things that make atheists look bad when they say things like this, especially to an educated theist that goes, that's just stupid. The reason being is when you prove something, it can never be disproven. Okay? Now, people can say, well, hey, Steve, you know, you're, you're an idiot. When are they finding fault with the proof? Well, that means it was never proven to begin with. You attributed it, but then you retract that claim that it was ever proven. What, if it is actually proven, it can never be disproven. So to say that a theist will have to prove their God, whatever that would mean, because you don't prove existential claims like that. Proofs exist in logic. Even science doesn't prove anything. It's a common misconception. Science never proves anything. It explains. And there always has to be that falsification criteria. The best theories can be falsified, right? So you never prove a theory. And so when you ask a theist, well, you have to prove your God first before I can disprove it, you don't know what the hell you're talking about because you're literally saying if if they prove their God, right, you're done. You can't disprove it at that point. Yeah. So it's one of those things that, that people throw out there as a meme you know, or, or a, a attack, but they don't realize how dumb it makes them sound by saying something like that. I'm going to try to recap in a nutshell, capture something that you said. Uh, we go through life sure. uh, in our world view is that which is referencing – uh, kind of all the flag posts that we place down to recall and say what I believe about this and then they reference the black, the flagpole uh, which identifies that environment you know kind of the cause and effect scenario going on um, which for somebody they might be told as a child um, Aunt Sally got better because we prayed for her so now the child planted a flag right there uh, grows up 15 years later without having to recall it for any other reason, uh, that flag post now acts as part of the worldview that says when we pray, somebody gets healed. Am I on the right track so far? Yes, very much so. Oh, okay. Um, but then you distinguish th that from knowledge. So let me ask you, Steve, um, in order to have knowledge, do we reference that flag post? I think you might have said these words against other things that we know to be true and then find that as a false attribution? Help me out here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We, we made a false claim about having knowledge that we didn't have. Got you. And then it wasn't we, that the knowledge is wrong. Knowledge has to be true. We were just, we falsely thought we had knowledge when we actually didn't. A belief's different, right? We don't say we had a fault. We don't say that uh, we never had a false belief. We, we say that we're wrong. Our belief was false. We don't say our knowledge was false. Got you. So how do we go from the point where um, God does answer my prayers, God does heal people on the street? Um, you know, uh, I prayed for somebody I had pain, and they made the statement that the, plant, the pain is now less or gone. How do we go from planting the flag there to arriving at a place where we can know something different? You have to start with the with the theory of knowledge you wanted to actually use and that, like I said, there's different theories of knowledge there's different theories of truth and I think that if somebody wants to really build a very strong epistemic framework they need to dive into these things and they need to figure out which ones that work for them and it's not one size fit all you can use anyone you want but when somebody tells me that they know something the first question I ask them is what theory of knowledge are you using and if they can't answer that then I don't know if they really know what it means to know something there's always three conditions that are necessary to be considered knowledge. It's, it's tripartite. So one, you need um, 
the proposition to be true. You need you need P to be true, it's called, right? So you need it to be true. You need to believe that it's true. And you need to be justified that is true. That would be called justified true belief. You hear theists throw all the time going, justified true belief. And, and the atheist goes, oh, that's nonsense. No, actually, that's not nonsense. That's actually epistemology. They're, they're actually telling you something that is factual. Don't, don't dismiss what somebody has to say just because you think they're a theist or an atheist. Go by what they're telling you. And ju- justified true belief is a very legitimate theory of knowledge. I don't particularly subscribe to it. I go to reliableism or reliably produced true belief, which is similar. But – all of it means that you have to have a belief first. I cannot believe something to be true. I mean, I can't know something to be true unless I believe something to be true because mm-hmm. knowledge is a subset of belief. So when people say um, – well, I, all the time people kid around. You hear it all the time. People say, well, people don't know if – Steve. If people don't believe Steve exists. Have you ever heard that? I get a lot. There's even memes out there. You know, I don't believe Steve exists because I've had a lot of atheists tell me they don't hold a belief that I exist, so therefore they don't believe that I exist. And I keep telling them how irrational that sounds because it's yeah. wrong. And, and they say, well, I can't know. Well, who cares if you can't know? I, I believe that I'm talking to you right now, right? I have that belief. I actually can say that I know that I'm talking to you because I can justify it with my my theory of knowledge and my theory of truth, which again, like the coherentist point of view would be, well – do these facts correspond to other facts we know, right? That's where the coherentist position would be. But truth, you know, I was watching Apologia's video today, and he had a great line from uh, uh, Eugenie Scott. And I've heard this before, but it was I didn't feel her the whole thing in it, uh, like I did on his video. And she had a very brilliant way of putting this. Facts are a dime a dozen. Facts are the lowest thing that we need to give a crap about. And I know a lot of atheists have a hard time thinking about that. They think, oh, it's got to be factual. No. Theories are the highest thing. Then you have laws, and then you have hypotheses, and then you have facts. Because facts don't really tell you anything, right? Sure, it's a fact that this, this is a cup. Does it really tell you anything? But if I have, if I drop this cup, okay, it's a fact that it falls to the ground. Again, so what? But if I tell you, here's the law of, of gravity that models that, and here's the theory that explains the law, that's a hell of a lot more important than that fact. So on the scale of things that we should give a crap about as, as uh, people that are non-believers or even, even people that are believers are facts. They're, they're ubiquitous. Okay, sure, they're facts, but you, I don't think they're as important as other things. And so when you, when you, when you start talking about the theory of knowledge um, and theories of, of, of truth, those to me are more important than facts because those are what you as a person determine what you think is the criteria to have knowledge and to have truth. I'm a foundationalist, right? And that's a very simple position. Some people, you know, like it, some people don't. But it starts off with very basic assumptions. Like the universe is real. That's a very basic axiomatic assumption that's not inferentially unjustifiable. You can't inferentially justify a, a properly basic belief. But you know what? I think we all start from that position. You cannot prove to me that the universe is real. You just Accept that it's real. You take it as a brute fact. You take it as an axiomatic assumption. Nothing wrong with that. And I think we build a framework from those things by which we can actually start saying, from those assumptions, now we have truths. Just like we do in mathematics, right? You have Pino's axioms. You have things that you accept as axiomatically true. But now by using those axioms, you can actually do a formal proof. I can show you that the square root of two is irrational or something, right? So just because we start off with axioms, that things we assume that are arbitrary, doesn't mean we can't get to something that's true out of it. And I think people make a lot of mistakes when they, they say, well, well, science has assumptions. Well, so what? That's, it's great science has assumptions. We want science to have assumptions. Now, if you can falsify one of those assumptions, you can show one of those assumptions that's wrong, like the uniformity of nature. If you can show that the laws of physics today are going to differ than they are tomorrow, you're going to be famous, right? Yeah. So we, 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 we do assume certain things, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so again, just a long story short, yeah, it, it, you have to really look into what you mean by, by, by knowledge. But knowledge has to be meet certain conditions. And if I say, look, it, I, I'm talking to you. I have evidence I'm talking to you. I believe that it is true, is the case. Um, I am talking to you. Um, and am I justified to believe that? Yes, I, I've had uh, conversations with other people. Unless you're a very sentient AI – that can pass the Turing test, I'm justified to believe, or excuse me, justified to know that you are not some computer. Now, but somebody says, well, you could be wrong on that. Well, so the shit what? Okay, I could be wrong on that. And that means I didn't have knowledge to begin with. That's all. 
People are afraid of being wrong. People are afraid of not having that epistemic certainty. And I'm telling you right here and now, anybody ever listens to this, you really cannot be certain about anything if you're going to be using that as a metric. If you look at the Cartesian certainty or Descartes' version of certainty, you're never going to have it in any real capacity. Don't even try. Why? 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 That's the theist game. The theist game says the proposition, the presuppositionists, which you know people did want me to get into, but I, unfortunately, I don't think I have time. But um, they say, well, you can't know anything unless God exists. Well, why not? Yeah. Even if that was the case, even if God had all knowledge, how the hell is he going to impart it to you? You're a finite being. There's no mechanism by which he's going to tell you everything he knows, or even remotely, how would you even know it's from him? Right, so this this narrative that you can only have knowledge of a deity exists is completely just that's a game that they play, and it's wrong because to have knowledge, I can guarantee you, go look at any theory of knowledge you want. There's quite a number of them, and I've looked at all of them. Not one of them says God. Hmm. Not one. Well, okay, there you go. You have. Um... All right, Steve, you covered a lot there. <laughs> I did want to. Ask... <laughs> Yeah, I did want to ask I, you. I'm like, not going to bore you. I mean, you're t- yeah, I'm afraid I'm more. I'm afraid I've, I've watched your other interviews, and I love them, by the way. And by the way, shout out to uh, Atheist Edge, Jim, one of my favorite interviews. Uh, you, that was, I couldn't have even seen any flaws in that interview. It was so good, so entertaining, <laughs> both of you. Um, and so I, I don't want to bore you by this kind of stuff. People get really bored by philosophy, which is really weird when they say, well, I, I, I had a, when I was in this group, they actually said, well, this is not a philosophy group. I'm like, it's about atheism and theism. Well, yeah, but it's not about philosophy. And I'm like, do you understand how idiotic that sounds? Yeah. The, uh, the, theism and atheism are philosophical topics. They're yeah. part of philosophy. And people seem to ignore that fact. You can't just say, I hate philosophy, and then go, well, let's talk about theism, or let's talk about atheism. Well, that's like saying, well, I hate science. I love biology, right? But, you know, this is not a science group. Well, <laughs> biology is part of science. Right. So, number one, um, Jim is awesome. Um, I was just he's talking awesome. to him a little bit earlier today, by the way, over Messenger. So, he's, he's a great guy. I love that guy. Um, two, we are at time. What I really wanted to do is, like, interrupt you a lot and ask you a lot of questions. But I didn't want to interrupt your thought, especially at the end of the interview. Um, so, all right. If anybody's watching this right now, obviously, uh, Steve McRae of the Non Sequitur Show is uh, is somebody to check out. You know, it's just what's what's so funny right here is um, uh, speaking with your co-host and hearing the banter that you guys going back and forth. It's it's like what Those... we have a weird relationship. He he's the very um, creative one, right? I mean, he does all the graphics. I do the CGI, some of the CGI, like for example, like the dumpster fire thing with Red's rhetoric logo. I did all that CGI. But he does the, the, the thumbnails, and he's very, very good at that stuff. Yeah. Um, I take care of the more uh, scientific and the, and the hard-hitting questions. And I'm not saying he doesn't. He has very good great questions. But I look at things very analytically and very rationally, and, and I like to use a Socratic method in and and kind of get to the crux of the things, right? Which may not be always as entertaining as his his style, but I think it's informative, and I think that's what the audience wants to see. They want to see that working dichotomy between both, because I find shows are either one or the other. Yeah. You know, you either get this really kind of superficial crap that's just, eh, whatever, um, not to mention any of the shows out there, but there's a few. Um, yeah. but, and then the other ones are just um, really too... Uh, just uh, especially the theist ones they're very very boring right i mean i don't know if you ever watched a theist show on on youtube lately but my god they just put me to sleep not right? so i tend to be so. entertained by all the theist shows even if it's like um radio like i love listening to that stuff because i'm usually the guy in my car listening to the preacher and i do that from time to time like maybe once a month yeah going to the gym or something and i turn it on it's a, a preacher on and I'm going out of my mind. So for me, it's actually entertaining, uh, even if it's like otherwise the dullest thing ever. Um, but don't you want to don't just want to like take your head and throw it into the dashboard repeatedly when when you hear certain things? And not just because like again, I am not against re- religious beliefs. I'm not an anti theist by any stretch of imagination. I am not anti Christian. I'm not anti anything really per se, except for anti young earth creationism. But when I hear people make bad arguments, whether it's become from a theist or from an atheist. I just wanted to like take my head and just smash it against the wall and say, stop doing this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. Well, let's make a transition from there. This is going to be a rough transition, guys, but we're a little over on time. But anyways, all right. Can anybody see the shirt that I got on right here? Check that out. Uh-huh. 